Hello guys, this is Orof and a warm welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you a brand new archetype for necromancers that deals insane damage. And for this we need to bring at least one crusader into our party. And I'm going to explain to you exactly how it works. But before I do, let us first enjoy the ride. So buckle up because here we go. So as you could see there, we are managing over 2 billion damage in one minute with this setup. And this is numbers that uh, we have never seen before. So I'm really excited to show to you guys how it works. So let's first look at the skills I'm using. As primary attack, I use Bone Spear. And in the first skill slot, I use Skeletal Mage. In the second skill slot, I use Command Skeletons. In the third skill slot I use Bone Wall and in the fourth and final skill slot I use the Grim Scythe. So let's start looking at the essences I'm using for this build and first we're going to look at the helmet slot where I use Skull Veil and what it does is that it increases the skeletal mage duration by 30% and another 9% at Essence Mastery level 4. We need to prolong the duration of these mages that I just spawned because they deal a lot of damage by themselves. But they also apply the fire banner dots and the right amount of duration is also needed for a certain interaction between mages and one of the main hands I'm going to show later. The next slot we're going to look at is the chest piece which is called Bloodless Hierophant. And what it says is that the bone wall now conjures the altar of the dead, increasing your damage while you remain within the area. And at Essence Mastery level 4, bone wall cooldown will also be reduced by 7.2%. So let's look at the skill. When I'm using bone wall, I can place down like an area where the buff will take place. And as long as I stand within this area, I will receive a huge damage increase buff. And what's also worth to mention about this essence is that if we go here to the skill page, we can now see that this gives a 50% buff. It used to be 40%, but they uh, buffed it the latest uh, patch. So this is even stronger than it was before. The next essence that we're going to look at is the shoulder essence. And it's called Executive Discontent. And what it says is that it increases all damage you deal by 9.5 for each skeletal mage you have active. And this is also one of the reasons why we want a lot of duration on the mages, because then we will have more mages up at the same time. And uh, the bone wall buff will not be up 100%, so then it's good to have this shoulder to fill in when uh, the bone wall buff is down. The next essence we're going to look at is called Ravening Silence. And what it says is that Grim Scythe now triggers on continual damage effects on targets it hits, causing them to instantly take the remaining damage. Grim Scythe cooldown is also reduced by 3.6% at Essence Master level 4. And if you know your Crusader well, this looks very similar to Torrential Refrain. And this essence is very, very important in this build, as we will see later. The next essence we're going to look at is the main hand, and it's called Craving Bay. And what it says is that Grim Scythe now empowers you with Grim Calling, 
causing your primary attacks to unleash slashing scythes when they hit enemies. And Grim Scythe damage is also increased by 18% at Essence Master level 4. And this is exactly like Accurate's Rebuke and Condemn with the Crusaders, so we're basically having a similar combination now with the Pants and this main hand. And uh, if I use Grim Scythe and we attack the dummy, we can see now that each time I hit the target with the primary attack, I also deal damage with Grim Scythe. So this will resolve all remaining dot damage. The next essence we're going to look at is the first offhand and it's called the Prong. And what it says is that it decreases the time required to raise new skeletal champions by 57%. And I'm going to show you what I mean. You can have a total of six mages and skeletons alive at the same time. So whenever I summon a third mage, one of the skeletons will die. So now I killed off Skeleton and now one, when one of the mages died it will take less time for this Skeleton there in the middle to respawn. And I'm going to show you later why this is important. The next essence I'm going to show is the main hand and it's no rest no peace. And it says when command Skeletons die they grant nearby allies 38% increased attack speed for 3 seconds. So let me show how it works. It's the same interaction I'm going to use here with the mages. I summon the first mage, I summon the second mage, and now when I summon the third mage, I'm going to receive the attack buff because one of the skeletons will die. And we will look deeper into this interaction a little bit later in this video. The final essence we're going to use is Vishray's Coffin Lid. And what it says is that Skeletal Mage now summons a Dark Magus that unleashes Hungering Soul Fire at nearby enemies. Skeletal Mage damage is also increased by 18% at Essence Mastery level 4. And this is what this new Skeleton looks like. And you can see that it shoots a Soul Fire Ultimate on the target. So it's a very strong Essence. Now we're going to have a look at the legendary gems I'm using. And in the helmet slot I'm using Freedom and Devotion. And what this gem does is that it increases the duration of the summons by 24% and it also increases the damage done by 3%. And when the item is awakened here we also get a cooldown reduction on the mages which is super important. Let us also look inside of the gem for fun. I can put in a trickshot gem and I can also put in a chain death. And the bonuses I get here, they're, they are both defensive bonuses that are not necessary. But I thought it would be interesting for you to see what it looks inside. In the chest slot I'm gonna use pain clasp. And what it says is that in it will increase damage dealt by 24% to enemies suffering from a continuous damage effect and when an enemy is suffering from a continuous damage effect it will also increase my movement speed by 6%. And there you can also see that the awakening effect will decrease the cooldown by 10%. And if we look here inside I can put in a blessed pebble, the abiding curse and the hunger. And this also gives defensive stats, so this is not necessary at all, but as I said, I just wanted to show you guys. In the shoulder slot, I'm going to put in my Echoing Shade, and it's at rank 8. And what it says is that your attacks have a 15% chance to summon a Shadow Clone for 17 seconds that attacks nearby enemies with one of your primary attacks. And you can have up to three Shadow Clones at one time and their life is increased by 50%. You need at least rank 7 for three clones but I would recommend you to get at least rank 3 to get two clones because it's really good for this build. In the next slot in the pants we're going to put our Royal in Consequence and I have it at rank 8 and what it says is that Dealing damage sends you into a roiling rage for 6 seconds, during which your critical hit chance is increased by 36%. And 
and critical hits cause a fire explosion that burns nearby enemies for 36% base damage over 3 seconds. Explosions cannot occur more often than once every 1 second. Roiling Rage cannot trigger more often than once every 20 seconds. Also, it applies a burn effect that gives me 9% critical hit chance against that target. In the next slot, which is the first main hand, we're going to put Mother's Lament. And what it says is that when you deal damage, you have a 20% chance of gaining maternal disdain, increasing your critical hit chance by 32% for 6 seconds. Cannot occur more often than once every 20 seconds. And when maternal disdain ends, you release a blood spike toward enemies, dealing 54% base damage. You also apply a bleed effect when that happens. And we could see there that the awakening effect on this main hand gives me 10% damage on the Grimskythe. And inside we can put in Shane Death, Followers Burden and Power and Command to give us some extra offensive stats that are, that are nice. But of course this is not necessary. In the prong we are going to put our Bottled Hope. It's not so important to awaken this slot. And what it does is that when you use a skill to grant the buff, it increases the damage and movement speed of the target by 20.5% for 6 seconds. And this cannot occur more often than once every 20 seconds per target. And what is also very important here it is that it gives me skill cooldown reduction of 4.5%. And this is at rank 8. In the next main hand slot, we're gonna put in Bloody Reach. And what it says is that it increases all damage you deal by 6% for every 2 yards between you and the enemy hit, up to a maximum of 24% at 8 yards. And in addition, your attacks have a 1.2% chance to decrease enemy movement speed by 35% for 3 seconds. And inside, I can put an Everlasting Torment, a Lightning Core, and another Power and Command. And this will also give me offensive stats. So this is not necessary, but it's uh, juicing up those damage numbers a little bit more if you are able to. The last legendary gem I'm using is a Blood Soaked Jade, which I'm putting in my second offhand. And of course you don't need a rank 10 Blood Soaked Jade, but what this says is that it increases all damage you deal by up to 24% while at full life, with a minimum bonus of 12% while at low life. It also increases my movement speed by 10% and additionally take 8% less damage when below 10, 50% life. And uh, if I didn't have Blood Soak Jade at rank 10, I would put the Bloody Reach into this slot instead because it's very important to get the awakening effect with 10% cooldown reduction. I also want to show you what it looks like inside of a Blood Soak Jade and I'm going to teach you guys a trick. If you see here, I put in Unity Crystal and Cutthroat Screen. But the lightning core is currently in my bloody reach and I need to go to my bloody reach and pick it out. And then I go back to my blood soaked jade and when I now put in the lightning core I unlock the next slot so that I can put in a Swenson's Haunting to unlock the third bonus there on the left side. And when I've done so I can take out the lightning core and I can go and put it back into the bloody reach. If I wouldn't do that, I would not unlock that third offensive attribute on the blood soaked jade. And if we look now on the blood soaked jade, you can see that I have still the Swenson haunting inside without any lightning core. So next we're going to look at the set pieces I'm using. And first I'm going to equip four pieces of Vitu. And to be honest, this is maybe not optimal in a party because you could have someone else apply the four uh, Vitu effect with, for the attack speed. But what the Vitu does is that it increases the duration of beneficial effects on both myself and my party members by 30%. And whenever I receive a buff, uh, I gain 30% attack speed. And both of these bonuses are very important, but I could tweak this build a little bit more to maybe juice out some more damage, put in two pieces of Shalbas or something. I also use four pieces of Shepherd set, 
and what it does is that it increases the damage dealt by my summons by 15% and I also get 18% extra critical hit chance. And critical hit chance, I've told you guys many times, it's super important. In this case, I use both Mother's Lament and Royal and Consequence. So when those two buffs are active, I'm actually above 100% critical hit chance. But in between, it's still worth it to make sure that you have enough critical hit chance. That's why I use the four piece shepherd. If we go here and look on my familiar, this is also very important. And I use a brood talon with 200 insight. This brood talon has the best PVE passive skill in the game, which is lingering wounds. And at base value, it gives 27.5% armor break to a target, but with maximum insight, it gives an extra 9%. And you can also see that I have tenacity, which reduces the cooldown of the active skill. So very, very strong familiar. I also focus on traits that gives me critical hit chance and primary attack damage. And you can see here that I've almost been able to cap it. I just need a brood talon with maim and bestial might to cap it. I would get another 3% critical hit chance and another 4.5% primary attack damage. So this is something I'm going to try to acquire. I can also mention there that I always use defensive mode and not aggressive when it comes to familiars. For the Paragon I'm using Weaver. And uh, also if we go and look on my Warband room, I'm in the attack room. And I get increased damage by 3.5%. And if you look on the remnants, I use a remnant set with all the yellow ones. So Manifest Carnage, which increases my critical hit damage. Tiferous, that increases my damage. And I also have Cholera Brutus, that increases my damage. And finally, I have Curb Bit of Haste, that increases my attack speed just a little bit. So a decent set. I also want to show you the magical attributes and on my necklace, gloves and rings I go for damage done by my summons increased. On my waist, my feet, the legs and the chest I go for beneficial effect duration. And on the offensive slots, yeah, let's first look on the bracelets here. They don't give any important magical attributes so I try to look for three sockets. And on the helmet, the shoulders, the main hands, the off hands, I always try to find something with critical hit chance. And uh, my second favorite attribute is critical hit damage. But it's also nice with attack speed or skill damage, especially for this specific build. Since I'm often capped with my critical hit chance, I don't have to go all in on it any longer on these items. We're also going to take a look here on my reforgers. I'm using damage done by my summons, duration of beneficial effect, critical hit damage, skill damage and primary attack damage. I think that this is the best combination for this specific build. You could perhaps switch out skill damage for attack speed. It would work a little bit better. But this is a very all around reforge setup that I'm using for many different builds. Very good for summoners especially. Let's also take a quick look here on my secondary attributes and you can see that I focus a lot on potency because it increases harmful effect duration and also armor penetration. And for this dummy setup I put in only sapphires. That's why my armor is so low. You can see I also have two yellow sockets on the rings to increase my potency. And also because the magical attributes on those rings are 10% summon damage increase. Now it's really important to show you this interaction and why I'm using the prong. If we go there we see that I have 4.5% cooldown reduction on the bottled hope. We can also see that I have cooldown reduction on the mages, on the helmet and on one of the offense. So I have a total of 24.5% cooldown reduction. And this is very important for a certain interaction to work as intended. 
And this is also the reason why I'm using the prong. Because now when I do this uh, summoning of skeletal mages, you can see now when I summon the third mage, one of the skeletons will die. And when I summon the fourth mage, another skeleton will die. And then the first mage dies and now I want the skeleton to be able to resurrect before I use skeletal mage again. And after this I can just keep using skeletal mage and it will give me attack speed each time thanks to no rest no peace. And this wouldn't work either without freedom and devotion or the skull veil helmet that's why I need the duration on the mages as well. I can show you here if I would, for example, switch out uh, the offhand here uh, for the lightning mages instead. Then I would get a different awakening effect that increases damage instead of decreasing cooldown. And if I now try to do the same thing, it will not work as intended. So I summon the first mage and soon I'm going to summon the second mage. and. Now when I summon the third mate, it's going to work. I'm going to kill off a skeleton and I get the attack speed buff from no rest, no peace. But the problem as you can see there, because the cooldown is too high, the first mage I summoned managed to die before I summoned the fourth mage. So now I will no longer get the attack speed buff each time I summon a skeletal mage. So that's why it's very, very important if you want to use this build that you get around 25% cooldown reduction on the mages and that you get both freedom and devotion and skull veil for the duration on the mages. And you also need the prong because you need to summon the normal skeletons uh, fast enough for this cycle to work as well. Because if I change the prong, for life in balance so now i have the correct amount of cooldown reduction but what we will see now is without the prong it's going to work for the first couple of spawns here so when i summon the third one i'm going to kill off a skeleton but now when i summon the fourth one and i kill i'm going to kill off a skeleton but now the first mage dies and now because i don't have the prong a new skeleton will not rise before I use mage again. So once again, the attack speed cycle will not work as intended. So now when I have showed you the entire build, I can also mention that there might be some room for improvement. First of all, I mentioned that it's maybe not necessary for me to use four pieces of it too. It could be enough with two pieces because someone else in my party could apply this attack speed buff onto me so that it's active at all the time. And uh, what I could use as well is instead to include two pieces of Baron that would increase the duration of harmful effects by 30%. I could maybe also somehow switch in two pieces of Agmet to get 30% extra duration on all burn effects. I could also try to play around with some different gems. For example, I could try to use Mr. Elixir that increases the harmful effect durations by 24%. And this would work for a lot of the dots and it would also prolong the armor break effect from my familiar. So yeah, there are many things that could be changed. And I can also say that I am built 100% to increase my summon damage. So some of the changes that I would do would perhaps lower my overall damage. But it might not be the case for everyone because if you're not summon specced, maybe there are something that were, works better for you. Also in this dummy run that I highlighted, I used two crusaders and one barbarian. And the Barbarian used Sunder to have armor break on the target whenever the familiar skill, uh, Lingering Wounds, is not active. And I also used two Crusaders to always have Fire Banner up. 
but it's possible that uh, I could switch out one of the Crusaders or the Barbarian for another Necromancer that could use no rest, no peace instead of me. And I could maybe switch out some essences. I can also mention that there's an effect on the new type of items that allows us to get even more skeletons as a necromancer. I explained to you and showed you this cycle uh, that we can have uh, for the no rest no peace attack speed buff that we can have no more than six skeletons or mages up at the same time but with this new effect from the new type of items that we get from terror rifts we can now have up to eight skeleton and skeletal mages alive at the same time so that would also be a great addition also the crusaders that you bring with you there's an effect that makes the banner also give attack speed which also come from these new terror items so this is also a great addition that you could add to the party to increase the damage even more and there are probably many other things that we could uh, experiment with. I can also say that if we look here now, if I use my, my Grimskythe, we can see now that the duration bar is ticking down on that green bar. And we can see now that I have a downtime on s around two seconds. So it's possible that on some of my set items here, for example, on the on the necklace or on the rings instead of go for 10% summon damage maybe it would be a little bit better to include some cooldown reduction here because remember I have 24.5% cooldown reduction on the mages and this is very important that I keep this number intact but maybe I can switch in around 10% cooldown reduction on the set items and then move the awakening effects from one of these items so that I still have the correct amount of cooldown reduction on the mages uh, while also getting some extra cooldown reduction on the Grimskite for example or on the on the bone wall which also have a little bit of downtime so there are definitely some room for improvement but uh, yeah uh, I think that before we say goodbye let's look at the dummy run again and i'm going to explain to you what is happening and when you should use different skills if you want to try this yourself so let's watch the dumb run again so here i am with my team and i'm just making sure that everyone is ready and when we start we're gonna first make sure that we are up to speed with this rotation for the attack speed that i have shown you guys so i'm gonna spawn all of my mages and then the dummy run itself will start now when i spawn the fourth one so i reset the timer and you also saw there that i activated the offensive stance for some extra attack speed in the beginning on both myself and my summons and how this works is that each summon and myself we are standing now within the fire banner and whenever we hit the target we apply this dot effect from the fire banner and also thanks to ravening silence and the main hand that syncs with grimskythe uh, whenever i hit the target with the primary attack i also resolve the remaining dot damage so what it means is that i do a primary attack i deal a lot of damage and before i make the next primary attack all the dots have been refilled so that's why we are able to juice out this immense amount of damage so yeah it's over 2 billion damage in one minute and uh, that was our goal when we went here and of course we also see now everyone celebrating and for my teammates here it's very important that they are able to show their loved ones how much they mean to them and i want to thank their wives as well for letting me borrow them for a little while to do these runs before we say goodbye i just wanted to throw in a little treat for you guys this is a version of this build that you can use in dungeons 
you can see here I include the bone armor shoulder that increases movement speed and I'm using the lightning package uh, for the summons uh, for you can see there on my helmet and on the chest and I would also switch out your primary attack for soul fire just remember to bring a crusader with you and if there are any crusaders here you can check my latest video for a nice dungeon build that works very well with this necromancer build so first of all thank you so much for watching this video and i hope that you would like to subscribe to my channel if you like this type of content uh, also please leave a like uh, and uh, spread some love in the comments and if you need any advice or any help, you can also uh, ask anything there because I try to respond to everyone. And uh, I also, of course, want to wish you a very nice day or a very nice evening wherever you are. And to all of my clan members in Nyx, I would of course like to say Voruk Nyx, Sholak So bye bye.